where he can spare us his time, we we lock him in. <laughs> And get him in studio. It's Reverend Frank Ritchie. Good morning, Rev. Good morning. It's a pleasure to just carve out time in my massively busy schedule for you guys. <laughs> You're so generous with your time. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> and I appreciate all the work no, your look, secretary does to get I, you here. Yeah, my, my, my PA is amazing. No, can I just say, it is a pleasure to pop in here every Wednesday morning. It's one of my favourite things in the week. Uh, I would move other things sometimes, sometimes, to make it happen. So. You should, once in a while, bring your EA in here. <laughs> Look, bring your okay. whole team in. Here bring it is. the whole squad. Is <laughs> my, my EA is a little, little black, thin <laughs> he's, phone he's thing. holding up his phone. And my watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we jest, we jest, <laughs> we jest. Okay. Um, yeah, so the first topic we're getting into, and I think many people may have this going on in their head a little bit, and maybe they haven't talked about it too much, but I think a lot of people identify with this. Mm. When people read the Bible and they the contrast between the Old Testament and the New Testament... Seeming contrast. Well, okay, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, surface-level contrast, I will say, <laughs> between the two, and they're reading about Jesus in the New Testament, they're reading about him going to the cross, they're reading about grace, forgiveness, all compassion, all this kind of stuff, and this, this person of Jesus, and then they read the Old Testament, and although there are many of those things in there, there's also this sort of justice, vengeful, <laughs> jealous, um, sort of wrath. Uh, all the, yeah, well, and, and, and I think a lot of people, when they read the two, are like, how, how is this the same God that I worship? And i struggling yeah. to see one from there. It's like it, it changes. But then the Bible always talks about God being constant, that yeah. him being the this consistent thing throughout. So... Take it from there, Frank. What do you got? Yeah, can I just say, preface this by saying it's a massive topic because it comes down <laughs> to how we read the Bible, how we understand the Bible, how we think about what the Bible is, and then differences in interpretation. So there are loads of places that I could go that might sound controversial, but then would need a lot of time to unpack. So I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to throw an idea on the table and then let people run with it. Um, I used to, I used to think like that that God was very different in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, but then I, there was something that I started to do annually that completely changed my perspective. I started every year. I haven't done it for the last couple of years just because of life stresses. But every year I would aim to read the Bible at least once in the year in 90 days. So really, really quickly, like taking out big chunks. It would take about an hour a day to be able to do it. And it completely changed everything because prior to that, I was doing, say, the one-year Bible uh, reading or I was studying particular passages. And so I'd get bogged down in detail and I'm going to I'm going to take this somewhere. So then I would read passages that showed God to seem uh, more violent and I would find that really confusing. And people to a degree, I think, should find that confusing. It should be hard to read in the system and the life that we live in the wake of Jesus. Like, you should go to the Old Testament, read some of that stuff, and there should be an element where it's really jarring. If you don't find it jarring, there's probably something a little wrong. But by reading the Bible really quickly and not not being allowed to stall on that detail, I saw a very different picture. And when you think about the Old Testament as covering a span of a couple of thousand years, uh, what we're reading is the exception, not the norm. But what you read is this consistent story of not God being the one who completely stuffs things up all the time and is violent and is bloodthirsty. What you read is us humans being like that and then God being amazingly gracious uh, and having to set things right from time to time, which then involves some things that feel harsh, but you get this consistent picture that God does something good, humanity stuffs it up, God gives a, a lot of leeway, a lot of rope, a lot of patience, and then has to pull people back. They live the good life for a little while, then they stuff it up again. <laughs> He's really patient, does something. And the cycle so continues. Kind of it's, the cycle <laughs> yeah. continues. And when you read it really quickly and you get the bird's eye view, what you see is a gracious, merciful, amazingly patient God and a relentlessly stuff it up humanity. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. And then that doing that just completely changed the picture for me. Now, that doesn't take away the awkwardness of some of the detail, but if we don't get bogged down in the detail and you take the bird's eye view, you discover that God is the same across the Old Testament and the New Testament. And then some of the other stuff we can talk through, uh, context, 
culture, differences, changing value systems, the change of how God interacts with people. But I would encourage people, if you want to see God in the Old Testament in a way that is consistent with the New Testament, read it really fast and get the bird's eye view. That's actually a good point because, you know, we, when we were talking about what we're diving into this morning, you interrupted by saying, saying seemingly different, mm. God seemingly different, but his character is unchanging through the old and the new. Um, but aren't you anticipating the good? In the New Testament, when you're reading, you know... Yes, right? yes, and as Christians, we're supposed to. As Christians, the New Testament and Jesus is the is the key to unlocking the Old Testament. We should be looking at the Old Testament back through the lens of Jesus. You can't, and you should not remove that context. Think about Jesus on the road to Emmaus and helping the uh, disciples that he was walking with to see him through the Old Testament. So we should be able to look back and Jesus should help us unlock the Old Testament. Now, of course, that doesn't make it a whole lot easier to deal with some of the violent passages, but it would take us a long time to unpack some of that stuff. How highly do you recommend reading the Bible? I mean, you said, I did. A, do you still do it once a year, 90 days? I'll be going back to that, but it's been okay, a couple of years. Okay, right. So you tried to do that somewhat regularly, but, you, but then you were like, before that, I'd only read it, you know, right through once a year. Yeah. That is probably well beyond, I would guess, what most followers of Jesus mm-hmm. have ever done. Mm-hmm. Because the, So how, how much value do you put on, on that? Oh, look, as, uh, as someone who sits in the wake of the Reformation and people who died to get the scriptures into the hands of people in their own language so that we could read it, I place a lot of stock in getting to know your Bible, but within community and within community of people who have studied it, who understand it, who know it well, who have done some formal training uh, within that context of community who are in different places, as opposed to just sitting in your own bedroom, coming up with your own interpretation. Uh, The Bible is a communal document. It's made to be discussed and to to be wrestled with in community. So it's in that context. But in that context, when you're connected to that, yes, read your Bible, read it daily, and then bring the stuff that you're struggling with to the communal discussion. Must have then? in your daily, weekly life, must do? I, I, I want to remove the word must from that because uh, I think <laughs> they just play, I think that places a burden on it that many of us then react to and run yeah. away from. I am fascinated by the Bible, so I, I dive into it. So go, go, with it, go to it with a sense of curiosity as opposed to this is something that I have to do because like I'm a Like a duty, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just be curious. It's it's a it's it was given to us in a whole different world in a whole different context, and it is phenomenal. So go to it with a sense of curiosity. Yeah, I like the community element in that as well. Bible groups and community connect groups. I think that's a good way to approach it as well. Yeah. Stick around because uh, the Reverend Frank Ritchie continues our conversation. We dive into dreams next. We're going to shift gears completely to what we were talking about: Old Testament, and New Testament. Right now, we're going to talk about dreams and visions. What do dreams mean? What's the difference between a dream and a vision? Mm. Let's start with the first, dreams. Yeah, firstly, I love this topic. I'm going through a phase at the moment where I think, um, if I'm honest, I think my senses to the spiritual have been dulled over the years. As a public Christian figure who wants everybody to kind of hear the gospel and hear the message, I think there's an element where I've dumbed it down for an uh, unbelieving uh, culture. But then in my world, in my chaplaincy work, I have people who throw spiritual ideas on the table all the time that are wild. I'm like, why have I done away with or kind of sidelined the wild of, of my faith uh, when these people are willing to put this stuff on the table? So I'm trying to reignite that. And dreams and visions are a really good part of that. So there's a bunch of different ways that we can define dreams and visions. Dreams, obviously, the things that have, if we're talking in a spiritual sense, obviously those things that happen when you're asleep. Now, there's there's discussion around a vision, therefore, is something that happens when you're awake. But I'm going to give a slightly different definition because I think the word vision gives us something. We relate vision to our to our sight. So I'm going to say that a vision is something that brings clarity in relation to God. So a dream could feel fuzzy, uh, but I think if a vision is something that brings clarity, I think it can happen when you're asleep or awake. So I'm going to say a vision when it comes to dreams is a dream that 
that just has something weightier with it, something that is a little clearer, if that makes sense. Sort of an odd one, eh? Because, I mean, there's nothing worse than having to listen to someone tell you about the dream they had last night. Like, it's one of the worst human experiences that exists. <laughs> it's the most incoherent story. Nothing makes sense. It's all over the place, and it never ends with any point. It just sort of stops somewhere along yeah. the line. Then I just woke up, so it just went nowhere. Especially we're if like, they why give are it, we doing? Why are we having this conversation? Especially if they give it in detail, <laughs> as opposed know. to, I had this dream about this thing. And, the, and then you were there, but you weren't there, because it was, and it wasn't really you, but it was you, but yeah. it wasn't. And then, anyway. Anyway, we've all been there, right? But then, I mean, when you look at the Bible, and especially in the Old Testament, a lot as well, there's a lot of stories of, like, uh, people having God speak to them through their dreams. Clearly a dream. And they often don't know what it means. And they go to somebody else to be like, what is this? What is this? What do you make of this? Yeah. Uh, do you reckon God speaks through that a lot to people? Or is that a very odd occurrence? That's, you, that, that's a good question. The regularity of it. Uh, I would say that for some people, they probably some people experience it regularly. Others, for others, it's a very rare thing. I've had, I count on one hand, uh, occasions where I have felt like God has truly dropped something into my conscience. Um, and a couple of those times have been when I've just been sitting in silence in prayer and I've just had this vision, this sense of something in my mind's eye as my eyes have been closed that I would say was very definitely mm. God. Um, I, I can't recall ever having a dream that would be that, but I have people in my life who have relayed dreams to me and I've decided that, uh, look, I, I really do think that is from, from God. And I think the sense of deciding whether it was the cheese the night before mm. or whether it was from God is the sense of it coming from somewhere else. Because uh, you can often wake up and know that your brain was probably just processing stuff, and that led to some weird things. You can going connect on in it to head. things the day before that you're like, oh yeah. yeah, I see where that sort of came up from. Yeah, but I've had people who have who I fully fully trust. They're not like full blown weirdos or anything <laughs> who have happen all the time. Who wake up and they have this sense that a dream that they had really did come from somewhere else. And as they've relayed it, uh, it's been full of imagery that they would not normally conjure up themselves, but relates to a sense of faith, has given them something that they've felt a real need to contemplate and to work out. I would say that that's a dream that is from God. Mm. A couple of things that come out for me, deciphering what that vision or what that means. Um, as, as humans, do we need to be careful and activating what that sort of what we feel might be a vision to us and thinking that's really pressing hard on my heart or pressing hard on my spirit that I need to activate that and if I'm going to ignore what's happening here and ignore maybe advice that I have around me because I have this very strong vision there's one deciphering and yeah. then what are you supposed to do with it when you have a vision yeah, those are those are good questions. It probably depends on what's revealed in the dream or the vision. Like for for me, the two that I had uh, related to ultimately trust in God. Like just just trust me uh, and seek me. The second one would uh, that I can that I can think of was definitely uh, an encouragement to to seek and to enjoy the seeking of of God. And at the time, I really needed that encouragement. Uh, of course, there can be more, much more serious things that get revealed in, in dreams and visions. Uh, and there might be times where it's very clear what needs to happen. And then there are times where it might not be. And I would say, again, it comes back to community. Uh, we think in very individualistic ways in our culture. So we think uh, uh, if I feel like I'm supposed to do something, I've got to go and do it. But I would say test, test things test things in community. The Bible encourages us to test things. So if you're unsure and there are people around you that you trust, relay the dream or the vision that you had and what you're feeling with them and see what they say. Go to scripture, see what it says. There are all these different ways that we can bring those things to community and test them. Very nice takeaway. As always, Frank, it's always awesome having you in studio. Thank Continue you. to be a good man. Stay blessed, my friend. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Here's the latest in news headlines.